Today we're going to bend some steel into benches. Hi, Ben here from Homemade Modern. Now I haven't done a lot of metalworking before, so I know it can be kind of an intimidating material. So I thought I would share some of my experience as a beginner with you guys to create this new series. We want to focus on simple projects that can be made without specialty tools. We'll still work with some of the basic powered tools and occasionally introduce a new one, like in this case an angle grinder, but we'll really try to keep the projects as accessible as possible. All right, let's get to it. I went to my local steel yard and ordered some plate steel. A four foot by eight foot sheet, one eighth of an inch thick, cost me about $110. I already had a rough idea about the projects I wanted to try, so I had the guys there cut it for me. They used this giant shear to cut pieces that were one foot wide and four feet long. For my first attempt, I just drew some perpendicular lines and clamped the steel down to a couple of sawhorses. I used some scrap pieces of steel angles along with some big C-clamps to secure it. I wanted a leverage advantage for bending it, so I also clamped some additional steel angles to act as handles. The steel bent easily enough, but the clamps kept bumping into the 2x4 on the sawhorses and I really didn't pay attention to exactly where I was clamping the angles to the steel plate. I wanted the curve of the second bend to be somewhat similar to the first one, so I tried to approximate the same location for the clamps and the steel angles. Even without any supports, the steel was surprisingly stable. The sides weren't exactly perpendicular, so I clamped the board to the top to keep that nice and straight, and then used some bar clamps to help bring the sides in. The edges were a little bit on the sharp side, so I used my orbital sander with 100 grit pads to smooth them down a little bit. This could also be done by hand with sandpaper. Oh, remember those lines I drew with a silver sharpie? Those come off really easily with some acetone. I measured the distance between the ends of the bench and then cut three pieces of plywood to fit between them. I then glued these three pieces together to make a board that was about two and a quarter inches thick. While the glue was curing, I marked the location for three screws on each side of the bench. I used a hammer and a steel punch to create a small divot that will help keep the drill bit from moving around and wandering. I drilled holes for the screws to go through, and then I used a countersink bit to drill out the holes so that the screws would sit nice and flush. I removed the clamps from the plywood, gave it a light sanding with the orbital sander, and then sealed it with some Varathane. I used stainless steel screws to screw through the holes that I had drilled and into the plywood. So this came out okay, I mean it looks cool and all, but I wanted to see if I could come up with another technique where I could get sharper right angled bends. So I got out another piece of steel the same size and the same thickness, but this time I used my angle grinder to score some lines about a sixteenth of an inch deep into the plate steel. Once again, I sandwiched the plate steel in between steel angles and then clamped it to some sawhorses. I lined up the steel angles with the line that I scored, and this time I used 2x4s for the handles. My 2x4s were a little bit long though, so I had to flip it over. Now I'm bending with the scored line ending up on the inside corner of the bend. Now the bend was coming out nice and clean, but the whole contraption was a little bit rickety and I needed some help from Mike and Ray to hold everything stable while I did the pushing. We repeated the process on the other side and were able to get two nice, relatively perpendicular bends. For this bench, or maybe it'll end up being a night table, I ended up using short pieces of a 2x3 to make the supports. This time though, I tried rounding over the edges with an angle grinder and a flap disc, which worked a lot quicker than the orbital sander. I cleaned the steel with acetone and then sealed it with paste wax. I screwed into 2x3s and I'm pretty pleased with this nice little bench or side table. So these experiments are going pretty well, but I want to take things to the next level. But before I show you these evolutions, let me tell you a little bit about the sponsor for this video, Fracture. Fracture can take your favorite photos and print them directly onto glass. Just go to FractureMe.com and you can upload files directly from your computer or you can access them through your Instagram account. This results in high resolution prints that don't need to be framed since the picture is printed directly onto the back of the glass. You can select from a variety of different shapes and sizes. 
and then Fracture sends them right to you. I ordered prints of some of my favorite memories in both color and black and white. Another really cool and convenient feature is that it comes all ready to hang. Not only do they give you the screw that you can use to hang it, but the glass photos themselves have a little mounting slot on the back of them. So all you have to do is just screw the screw into the wall and then hang your glass photo directly on it. I really like how frameless black and white photos look when they're laid out in a grid like this. To learn more about Fracture, click on the link in the description box below. We had good results with a 1 8 of an inch thick steel plate, so we decided to step it up a little bit and try to go with 3 16 of an inch thick. Once again, we used an angle grinder to score about halfway down through the steel. But our first attempt at bending this thicker steel didn't go quite so well. All I ended up doing was just moving a couple of my friends around. So I laid out some longer 2x4s so that I would be standing on the 2x4 structure as I lift it up to bend the steel. I once again used a steel angle to clamp the plate down to the 2x4s. I used smaller C-clamps this time to clamp the 2x4 handles to the steel. This gives me a little bit more clearance. And these clamps only cost about $3 to $4 at Home Depot. I was able to bend the plate about halfway before having to readjust the clamps just a little bit. I had placed the clamps just a little bit too close to the angle steel and they were bumping into it. Now you do want to keep them close to have a nice tight bend, but all you need to do is just create just about a quarter or half an inch of clearance so that they just clear the thickness of the angle steel. I was pretty excited that just by myself with about five or six two by fours and a bunch of cheap clamps, I was able to bend this 3 16 of an inch thick plate steel. I don't normally show this many different versions within a single project video, but I was having a lot of fun experimenting. Let me know in the comment section below if you enjoyed this or if you just prefer shorter, quicker to the point videos. Now for this longer bench, I knew I was gonna need some more substantial supports. So I used a stepped drill bit to drill some large diameter holes in either end of the bench. Step drill bits are pretty cool. The deeper you drill, the bigger the diameter of the hole. I drilled deep enough so that a half inch steel pipe would fit through. I then used these nuts on either side of the plate steel. The bench is super strong and the pipe will keep the legs from bending out, but there's probably a little bit too much flex in the top. So we made a wooden beam out of 2x4s and then covered each side of it with some pieces of kumaru decking. We sanded the deck boards and finished them with some teak oil, cleaned and sealed the steel, drilled and countersunk some holes, and then screwed in the wooden beam. And now we have a super sturdy bench with no flex. This piece would work great as a bench for an entryway or even as a media console. Now I personally like the industrial look of raw steel, but we wanted to see if we could take the same piece in a totally different aesthetic direction. So we painted the steel with some white Rust-Oleum spray paint, made a shelf support out of 3 quarter inch thick oak, and totally transformed the look from dark and industrial to light and fresh. But wait, there's more. We wanted to try a two-tone paint job as well. So we taped off the outside and then spray painted the inside with this nice aqua color. Very minty fresh. We're going to use this one as a shelf for shoes. I'm really pleased with how affordable plate steel can be. The materials for each of these little benches cost about $20. For more information, check out our website. And if you want to see what we're working on next, be sure to follow us on Instagram. Check out some of our other videos and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks. Bye.